I'm stirring my coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method. The only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee on the molecular level. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. Let's get started, but first, coffee. Ah, nice. Ethiopian today. For some of you gadget guys out there, I'm having some focus problems with my phone. I do everything on my phone. This is a, gal a new Galaxy Note 9, and it does this autofocus thing where it just kind of goes in and out. And I've noticed it in my past two videos. If somebody can uh, comment down below on what to do, I put aside the camera that came with the phone, the app, and downloaded open camera. I had read on a forum that that solves the problem, but apparently it's not solving the problem and it drives me crazy. So if you have any ideas, the last Galaxy Note I had was a Note 5. It was point and shoot. It was what you see is what you get. But I've noticed a lot of going in and out and focusing issues. I don't even, and I've looked, and it's this is not an old guy problem. This is more of a tech thing, more technologically astute than, than my looks would have you believe. So if you could comment on that, let me know. That would be awesome. Thanks. Well, good morning. Nice day today. The sun is starting to come up. The sky is getting lighter, and there... The phone just did that thing again. It drives me nuts. It's throwing my game off. I'm going to a TV studio today in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And shooting a television interview show. I am the, the guest. I'll be talking about a lot of these issues that we talk about on the Daybreak Show. Should be good. I was talk, talking to somebody yesterday about Stoicism, and they just think that means being a statue. I want to clarify something. Stoicism is not a religion. It's a way of reacting to the world that pretty much optimizes your life. And I'm all about being the best version and optimizing the highest and best use of your life. If you live your life by your emotions, it's going to be a roller coaster. You're going to have ups and downs. Now, life is filled with ups and downs, but think about this. Classic Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, Men are not bothered by things, but by their opinions about those things. So the minute that you express opinions about things, or manifest your your personal definition of things it manifests itself in your body and in your life and i'm not talking there's no like woo woo stuff here this is just practical stoicism day-to-day -day practical stoicism for what i call the stable stoic if a man says things like like you train yourself to do certain things just like you would train yourself in the gym if a man says, I don't know what I would do without her, when she's gone, guess what? He won't know what to do without her. His opinion about her leaving or her being gone is going to affect him when she actually does go, if she does go. I, I couldn't live without her, I hear people say. Then guess what? When she's gone, you won't be able to live without her. And many men train themselves to die when someone leaves. Train yourself to live. Stoicism is not denying your emotions. It's delaying them. Have a bad day at work? No one should know about it. Get home? Close the door. You want to cry? Scream? Punch a pillow? Do whatever you want to do. I recommend working out or taking a walk. A brisk walk to get that energy out. 
by yourself or talking to a trusted friend, whether you are male or female. Don't deny your emotions. This is what happens when you build up, build up, build up emotions. You will explode. It comes out in ways that are disproportionate. You might get into an argument with a girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse. Over the smallest little thing, a spill or something, and then your response is just overblown, disproportionate to the amount of stimulus. And that's because you let things build up. That's why I say you need to take the walk, go work out, do whatever you do that's constructive, not destructive, as far as dealing with internal stress. Delay the emotions. Don't deny them. Let's get started. Make me a 40% said sandwich, 3% said hot pocket, 29% said burrito, and 28% said gyro. And one guy commented that it disturbed him that 3% said hot pocket. There we go with that focusing thing again. I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Dalton from Roadhouse, 1989. Great words to live by. Always be willing to walk away from the table when doing business. I can't stress this enough. This is another area where frame works in all areas of life. Frame. People come into your frame, not you in their frame. You can, con like for instance, when you interview people, when I interview people, they are in my frame. They do not dominate the conversation. I ask the questions, they answer. If it, be, if it becomes them asking the questions and taking the, and dominating the interview, then they are controlling the frame. I control the frame. You control conversations. And I'm not talking about being a control freak. That's the last thing you want to be is a control freak. You want to be able to enjoy life, not just control everything in life. But when it comes to transactions, you will benefit the best when you control the frame. I am the greatest. Muhammad Ali. Nothing like that first sip of dopamine in the morning. Excuse me one second. As people say, there's nothing, or they say, well, that's nothing but a dopamine hit. And my response is, there's nothing like a good sip of dopamine in the morning. Blue Book or NADA guides give you a ballpark idea of what to sell a car at or what to offer. However, the true value of a car or anything else in life cannot be determined by a standardized guide. It's only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. My dad taught me that many, many years ago. I go, Dad, how much do you think I can get for my used car? It was one of the used cars that I had when I was a, a teenager. He says, whatever someone is willing to pay for it. Or he would ask, well, what did you pay for it? And then he would determine if I improved it or not. But the idea is this. People say, well, it's worth this or this. Nothing is worth anything until someone whips out their wallet, a credit card, or a wad of cash, and how much they give you. That's how much it's worth. Which leads me to say this. Never pay top dollar 
for used merchandise. Some of you will know what I'm talking about. Others, whew, right over the head. Never pay top dollar for used merchandise. Men, do you listen to women who give you relationship wing woman advice? 13% said yes, 57% said no, 23% said what's a wing woman, 7% said what's a relationship. A lot of women out there giving advice about how to have a relationship with a woman. Rel giving advice to, to men, to men, on how to have a relationship with a woman. Does it work? I'm not hard in any direction. I say it can be 50-50. I like to say, does the fisherman ask the fish how to catch a fish? Think about it. My question is this. When you go fishing, do you put what is attractive to you on the hook or what is attractive to a fish? I'll let you answer that question. Let's take a look at the blog. Economic woes, Bunky? Step right up. What, me worry? You can't lose what you don't have. All of my well-to-do friends are fretting over what their investments are doing. I get daily reports of how much money they've lost in the stock market and all the grief that they're experiencing. That's nothing new for anyone who's been through a divorce or is an entrepreneur in round two or round three. Divorce and family breakup does the same thing. You lose everything, or at least initially you think you've lost everything. You wonder where you're going to live. You pretty much lose your standard of living. It gets challenged like nothing else does. It can challenge it. You discover eBay and find yourself selling things that you don't need. You might end up buying store brands rather than name brands. You're happy with the basics. Clean clothes, a tank of gas, good conversation. You're willing to give everything up except your high-speed internet or a cell phone. You refresh your ironing and spray starch skills from college. You buy glad plastic food containers because you can probably get another day out of that chili. You have baked beans with chopped hot dogs, ramen noodles, and hamburger helper for, hamburger helper for the first time in 20 years. You tip exactly 15% if you go out to eat. You turn lights off when you leave a room, put an extra blanket on the bed, and relive the joys of wearing sweaters in the house. You find yourself speaking to God a little bit more than you have in the past. And it's not all that bad, especially if you had nothing to begin with. Remember when Job in the Bible said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will depart. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job didn't sin or curse God foolishly. That's the real secret to making it through the economic woes in your life. You're born, you die. Somewhere in the middle here, you gain a bunch of crap. You might keep all that crap and then you die. And then people pick through your shit when you're dead. I've seen that happen. Half the stuff you own right now will end up in a dumpster. The other half will be, the other maybe 40% will end up at an auction. 10% will be picked through by your loved ones who will pick out choice things. So everything that you've gained in your lifetime will be worth nothing when you're here at death. So we spend all this time gaining crap. I say you get to a point where you start minimizing, where you start living a more simple life, 
So start giving stuff away, selling stuff, getting rid of stuff, hanging on to stuff. And then can you imagine just dying? And the only thing you're leaving with people is just a few items that are sentimental and investments and some money in the bank that will go on after you. But if you gain, 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 gain stuff and keep it until you die, like I said, half of it will end up in a dumpster. The things that you think are precious, I don't understand. Some of you will get that line. Is it time to downsize some things in your life? Whether it be stuff? Emotions? Are you emotionally invested in stuff? Are you emotionally invested in people? Loosen the grip a little bit on stuff. Loosen the grip a little bit on people. You will enjoy life so much more. And with that, I want to say have a great day. Finish your coffee, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.